young 20 year old Jody Loomis in 19. 19- It was early on a Wednesday afternoon when horse enthusiast Jody Loomis was riding her bike a short distance to visit her horse at the stables. But little did Jody know that she wouldn't be making that destination and the death clock was now ticking. In this world, there is evil waiting around each and every corner. And how your fortune cookie pays out depends on what corner you choose to take. A young couple out driving around looking for a secluded place to fuck had stopped to remove a log off of a dirt road. It was there they happened to cross Jody's bloodied and half-naked body. And although with a severe head wound in her right temple that looked like it could be a bullet wound, remarkably, she was still alive. It appeared that she'd been getting dressed and tying a shoe where she was shot. The young woman who was training to become a nurse and had gotten into an argument with her younger sister that morning about borrowing her boots died on the table shortly after arriving at the hospital. And if cops were looking for a motive, when they pulled down her underwear, they found it. But oddly enough, if she'd been raped, there was no struggle. So cops figure he promised to let her go if she'd give him carte blanche. And she did. Liar, liar, pants on fire. At first they figured it was a boyfriend. And although creepy enough, he had an alibi tighter than the Velcro strap on a cripple's boot. Besides, he lived with her and the family. A real swell guy. So the question remained, who was dripping out of the pretty young nurse in training? By all accounts, Jody was street smart. And I guess she figured she'd done what she had to do, and we're gonna live to tell her tale. But she was wrong. Dead wrong. And cops, they didn't have a lot to go by. Sure, they had enough jizz to make a jizz smoothie. But with forensics in its infancy, that weren't much good. And they had a slug from a 22. And that were all. And although they interviewed every hillbilly and swinging dick in town with a hard on, that was most of the state. And it wasn't getting them any closer. And eventually, like a lot of these kind of cases, they went cold. And time passed. Tick tock, tick tock. And the parents died. Detectives retired. And it just became a dusty box full of bad memories. But not everything that is buried remains buried. And through government initiatives, was simply a cop with a hard on. Old cases are pulled out of their dusty boxes and brought to the forefront. And Jody's was one of them. But it was while digging through Jody's old box that investigators discovered that they'd lost the jizz samples that they'd scooped out of her. I hate when that happens. But it was one of those clever egghead forensics that discovered some jizz on one of Jody's boots and saved the day. And they were back in the game, the jizz game. And they ran it through the jizz detector. And bingo! And up came one name. Actually, four names, the Miller brothers. But one of those brothers had a history of rape and sexually abusing underage girls. And Terrence Miller had had a history of sticking his dick in places that it weren't invited. And the younger, the better. Nice 
So cops put a tail on him, started following him around. And besides having a nasty case of hemorrhoids, investigators discovered that he liked to gamble. And while he was in a casino, blowing his load, they picked up one of his used coffee cups and ran it through the jizz detector, and it came up a royal flush. Yesterday, we arrested a 77-year-old Edmonds man. Uh, he's suspected of murdering 20-year-old Jody Loomis in 1972. His name is Terrence Miller. He was charged with murder in the first degree yesterday afternoon. We took him into custody yesterday morning without incident at his residence, and he was identified as a suspect through the process of genealogical DNA. On August 23, 1972, 20-year-old Jody Loomis intended to ride her bicycle from her residence on 20 Winesap Road to Strummy Road, where she was going to ride her horse, kept at a stable there. She rode north on North Road to 164th Street and east to the Bothell Everett Highway. She was last seen crossing the highway and riding up the hill on Penny Creek Road in what is now Mill Creek. At approximately 5.30 p.m., two people found Jody disrobed and shot in the heads in the woods off of Penny Creek Road. They transported her to Stevens Memorial Hospital in Edmonds, where she was pronounced deceased. An autopsy determined that her cause of death was a gunshot wound to the head, likely from a 22. Also during the autopsy, multiple swabs were taken from her body and some showed abundant spermatozoa. Missing from her bicycle was the bridle for her horse. We put together a chargeable case against Terrence Miller. Miller did not know Jody Loomis prior to that day. He was interviewed by detectives yesterday but declined to provide any statements about his involvement in the killing. We believe we have a murder suspect but without his cooperation, we still have a few unanswered questions that we'd like to try to get uh, resolved. And when gloating cops slapped the cuffs on Terrence Miller, I guess they figured they were heroes solving the mystery. But little did they know that Miller had it all figured out. And when the cops put him in the hot seat, he said nothing and sat there with a tight lips smirk on his face. And when the judge said he'd be held at a million dollars bond, he said he won a problem. And he reached into his pocket and he wrote a check, winking at the detectives as he left. And the judge's jaw were hanging lower than a retard's tongue at an ice cream eating competition. Because how did an ass fucking hillbilly come up with a million dollars bond? And throughout the trial he showed a beach day with a bored look on his face. Sometimes even reading the paper. And when the jurors adjourned to make their deliberation, Miller went home, made himself a peanut butter jelly sandwich, pulled out a shotgun, and he blew his fucking brains out. Huh, I thought there'd be more blood than that. And it was three hours after that bullet blew Terrence's brains against his kitchen wall that the jury found him guilty of the murder of Jody Loomis. And I guess, well, everybody who was originally involved in the case, now dead, it didn't really matter. But I suppose, in some way there was justice, somewheres, some house. <laughs> Legion forever!